Mercury Cougar is the name applied to a diverse series of automobiles sold by the Mercury division of Ford Motor Company from 1967 to 2002. As was common with Mercury vehicles, the Cougar shared basic platforms with Ford models. Originally, this was the Mustang, later the Thunderbird, and the last version of the Contour Mondeo. The Cougar was important to Mercury's image for many years, and advertising often identified its dealers as being of the sign of the cat. Female models holding big cats on leashes were used on Cougar ads in the early 1970s. The car was assembled at the Dearborn Assembly Plant in Dearborn, Michigan from 1967 to 1973, at the San Jose Assembly Plant in Milpitas, California from 1968 into early 1969, at the Lorraine Assembly Plant in Lorraine, Ohio from 1974 to 1997, and at the Flat Rock, Michigan Assembly Plant from 1999 to 2002. First generation, the introduction of the Cougar finally gave Mercury its own pony car. Slotted between the Ford Mustang and the Ford Thunderbird, the Cougar would be the performance icon and eventually the icon for the Mercury name for several decades. The Cougar was available in two models and only came in one body style. Engine choices ranged from the 200 HP 289er in 3-2 barrel V8 to the 335 HP 390er in 3-4 barrel V8. A notable performance package called the GT was available on both the base and XS7 Cougars. This included the 390er in 3-V8, as well as a performance handling package and other performance enhancements. The 1967 Cougar, with the internal code T7, went on sale September 30, 1966. It was based on the 1967 refaced first-generation Mustang, but with a 3-inch longer wheelbase and new sheet metal. A full-width divided grille with hidden headlamps and vertical bars defined the front fascia Euro it was sometimes called the electric shaver grille. At the rear, a similar treatment saw the license plate surrounded on both sides with vertically slatted grillwork and ceiling taillights, a styling touch taken from the Thunderbird. A deliberate effort was made to give the car a more European flavor than the Mustang, at least to American buyers' eyes. Aside from the base model and the luxurious XR7, only one performance package was available for either model, the Sporty GT. The XR7 model brought a simulated wood grain dashboard with a full set of black faced competition instruments and toggle switches, an overhead console, a T type center automatic transmission shifter, and leather vinyl upholstery. The GT package, meanwhile, supplied a much larger engine, Ford's 390 inch 3 FE series big block to replace the small block 289 inch 3 standard power plant. Along with this came an upgraded suspension to handle the extra weight of the big engine and give better handling, more powerful brakes, better tires and a low-restriction exhaust system. Introduced with the music of Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass The Work Song, the Cougar was a sales success from its introduction and helped the Lincoln Mercury Division's 1967 sales figures substantially. The Cougar was Motor Trend magazine's Car of the Year for 1967. The Cougar continued to be a Mustang twin for seven years, and could be optioned as a genuine muscle car. Nevertheless, it gradually tended to shift away from performance and toward luxury, evolving into something new in the market a Euro a plush pony car. The signs were becoming clear as early as 1970, when special options styled by fashion designer Pauline Traeger reappeared, a houndstooth pattern vinyl roof and matching upholstery, available together or separately. A reskinning in 1971 saw the hidden headlights vanish for good, although hidden wipers were adopted. Between 1969 and 1973, Cougar convertibles were offered. Not much changed for the Cougar in its second year. The addition of federally mandated side marker lights and front outboard shoulder belts were among the minor changes, but the biggest changes were under the hood and in performance for the XA7 model. A 210 HP 302 inch 3, 2 barrel V8 was the base engine on all XL7s and early standard Cougars. Three new engines were added to the option list this year the 230 HP 302 inch 3, 4 barrel V8, the 335 HP 428 inch 3, 
4 barrel V8, and the 390 HP 427 inch 3, 4 barrel V8. In addition, the 289 inch 3 engine was made standard on base cars without the interior decal group midway through the model year. There were many comfort and performance options available for the Cougar. For 1967 69, a unique tilt away steering wheel that swung up and out of the way when the driver's door was open ed was offered, and from 1971, a power driver's seat. The most unique option of all appeared in 1968, Ford's first factory installed electric sunroof. It was available on any hard top Cougar, but rarely ordered on early cars. Mercury was serious about the Cougar being the performance icon for the company. The XL7G, named for Mercury Road Racer Dan Gurney, came with all sorts of performance add-ons, including a hood scoop, Lucas fog lamps, and hood pins. Engine selection was limited only to the 302, 390, and 428 V8. A total of 619 XL7GS were produced, and only 14 GS were produced with the 428 CJ. The 7.0 LGTE package was available on both the standard and XA7 Cougars and came with the 427 V8. The 428 Cobra Jet Ram Air was available in limited numbers on the GTE beginning April 1, 1968. Conservatively rated at 335 HP, the 428 Cobra Jet could produce much more from the factory. A total of 394 GTs were produced. 357 with the 427 and 37 with the 428. The GTE came with power front disc brakes as standard. The third year of production, 1969, brought several new additions to the Cougar lineup. A convertible model was now available in either standard and XL7 trim. These highly anticipated soft tops proved quite popular and today are considered, by many, among the most desirable of the 6770 production run. On the exterior, the grille switched from vertical bars to horizontal bars. Tail lights still spanned the entire rear of the car and retained vertical chrome dividers, but were now concave rather than convex. Body sides now featured a prominent line that swept downward from the nose to just ahead of the rear wheel wells. A new performance package appeared and several disappeared. The GT XA7G and the 7.0 LGTE disappeared, but the 390 and 428 V8S remained. 302 engines were dropped, except for the Boss version, available only with the Eliminator package. The new standard Cougar engine was a 250 horsepower 351 Windsor. A 290 HP 351 Windsor V8 was also added to the engine lineup. The Eliminator performance package appeared for the first time. A 351-inch 3-4-barrel Windsor V8 was standard under the hood, with the 394-barrel V8, the 428CJ and the Boss 302 available as options. The Eliminator also featured a blacked-out grille, special side stripes, front and rear spoilers, an optional ram air induction system, a full-gauge package including tachometer upgraded decor interior trim, special high back bucket seats, rally wheels, raised white letter tires and a performance tuned suspension and handling package. It also came in a variety of vibrant colors, such as white, bright blue metallic, competition orange, and bright yellow. Only two Cougars were produced with the Boss 429 V8, making them the rarest Cougars ever built. Both were factory drag cars, built for fast Eddie Scartman and Dino Don Nicholson. A little-known 1969-only model was the Cougar Sports Special. The Sports Special package included unique pinstriping, turbine-style wheel covers and rocker panel moldings with simulated side scoops. The copyright car interior and performance suspension were available for the Sports Special, as were any of the optional Cougar engines, other than the Boss 302. Somewhat oddly, no badges or decals denoted the sport special option on either the interior or exterior. For 1970, the Cougar appearance was similar to the 1969 model, but numerous changes were made inside and out. 
it now sported a new front end which featured a pronounced center hood extension and electric shaver grille similar to the 1967 and 1968 Cougars. Federally mandated locking steering columns appeared inside, and high back bucket seats, similar to those included in the 69 Eliminator package, became standard across the board. The aforementioned new nose along with revised tail light bezels, new front bumper and front fender extensions, and larger, recessed side markers updated the look on the outside. The 300 HP 351 Cleveland V8 was now available for the first time, though both the Cleveland and Windsor engines were available, if the buyers selected the base model two-barrel motor. The 390 FE engine was now dropped, and the Boss 302 and 428 CJ soldered on. The Eliminator continued with new striping, revised colors, and the four-barrel 351 Cleveland replacing the four-barrel 351 Windsor as the standard Eliminator engine. The upgraded dark copyright core interior and styled steel wheels, standard 69 Eliminator equipment, were moved to the options list for the 1970 Eliminator. No Eliminator convertibles were factory produced in either 1969 or 1970. Unusual options for the 1970 Cougar were interior upholstery and vinyl top in bold houndstooth check patterns. Total production, 1967 150,893 1968, 113,720 1969, 100,069 1970, 72,343. Second generation, for 1971, the Cougar was restyled, weighed less, and had only a one inch longer wheelbase than its predecessors. The front end now featured four exposed headlights. The disappearing headlights were eliminated. The center grille piece was now larger. The rear featured a semifus back with a flying buttress sail panel. The convertible returned, as did the XL7 and the GT package. The Eliminator package was dropped, but the Ram Air option remained. The engine lineup was revised for 1971, as well. Now only three engines were offered a Euro the standard 240 HP 351 Windsor two-barrel V8, the 285 HP 351 Cleveland four-barrel V8, and the 370 HP 429 Cobra Jet four-barrel V8. By 1972, the climate had begun to change as the muscle car era ended. No longer able to use gross power numbers, the manufacturers had to use net power figures, which dropped the once mighty figures down substantially. Engines were shuffled around a bit with the 429 engine option no longer available. They were now the standard 163 HP 351 Cleveland two-barrel V8, or the 266 HP 351 C four-barrel Cobra Jet V8. Other than that, the Cougar remained a carryover from 1971. Only minor trim details were changed in 1972. The big block engines were gone for 1972 and 1973. The days of performance-oriented muscle cars were coming to an end. Aside from minor grille and tail light changes, 1973 would be largely a carryover year for the Cougar, but it would mark the last year of the Mustang-based Cougar, and the end of Cougar convertibles. Many changes were scheduled for the 1974 models. Power figures continued to change, as new federal EPA regulations began their stranglehold on the V8 engines. The new figures continued to fluctuate, but engine options remained unchanged from 1972. The standard engine continued to be the 168 HP 351 Cleveland two-barrel V8. Optional was the 264 HP 351 Cobra Jet V8. The following years changed to the Thunderbird Torino chassis. Total production, 1971 62,864 1972, 53,702 1973, 60,628, third generation, for 1974, the Cougar was shifted from its Mustang. Ponica Origins onto a new platform and into a new market as a personal luxury car. It now shared a chassis with the larger Mercury Montego Ford Torino Intermediates and was twinned with the new Ford Elite. 
the wheelbase grew to 114 inches and became practically the only car to be upsized during the downsizing decade of the 1970s. These years marked the end of the luxurious Mustang, and the beginning of the Cougar's move towards becoming a junior Thunderbird, and eventually a sibling of the Thunderbird. TV commercials compared the Cougar to the Lincoln Continental Mark IV, the most notable featuring Farrah Fawcett in a 1975 TV ad. The Cougar was being marketed as an intermediate-sized personal luxury car to compete against GM's Chevrolet Monte Carlo and Pontiac Grand Prix. Every GM division had an entry in this market by 1974, and the market was too large to ignore. The new Cougar paid homage to its smaller predecessor with a three-piece grille up front, topped by a new hood ornament which featured the Jaguar-like silhouette of a creeping Cougar. The car's Montego heritage was fairly evident from the back, however. In between, it had acquired the sine qua non of the personal luxury car in the 1970s, Opera Windows. This body ran unchanged for three years, and during this period all Cougars were XR7s. The Cougar was also restyled inside due to the switch to the larger intermediate body, but maintained the front fascia look from 1973 with a new styling feature including a rectangular opera window in the rear C pillars. The Cougar also began to share the look of the Thunderbird and Continental Mark IV as the years progressed. The base model and convertible were dropped this year, but the XL7 moniker soldiered on as the only model in the Cougar lineup. Engine offerings from 1974 to 1976 included a standard 351er in 3V8 and optional power plants included the very rare Q-Code 351 Cobra Jet V8, plus 400 and 460-inch 3V8S. The manual transmission was dropped in favor of the automatic. Interior offerings during these three years included a standard bench seat with cloth or vinyl upholstery, an optional twin comfort lounge 60-40 bench seat with center armrest and cloth, vinyl or optional leather trim, or all vinyl bucket seats with center console. In 1975, the Cougar XR7 continued to add more luxury features as it moved up market. But with more features, the Cougar was gaining in weight, as well. Compared to the 1967 version, the 1975 version weighed a full 1,000 lb more. Despite the added weight, the buying public wanted the Cougar, and sales figures reflected that fact. For the performance fans, however, a high-performance rear axle and traction lock differential continued to be on the option sheet. The standard engine continued to be the 148 HP 351 Windsor two-barrel V8 with the 158 HP 400 two-barrel V8 and 216 HP 464 barrel V8 optional. Visually, the only change from 1974 was the addition of two rectangular openings in the center section of the front bumper. The 1976 Cougar entered its last year largely unchanged from 1975. A new body for the Cougar was coming in 1977, so nothing else major was done to the Cougar. Only some minor trim pieces served to differentiate this year from last. Engines continued unchanged, as well. The high-performance axle and traction lock differential were dropped this year. Twin comfort lounge reclining seats, with or without velour cloth trim, were the only major change for the interior. In spite of the Cougar shifting market segments from performance coupe to personal luxury car, the sheet metal of this generation remained in use in stock car racing during the mid-1970s. In use by Wood Brothers Racing. A Mercury Cougar was the winner of the 1976 Daytona 500. Other teams, such as Bud Moore Engineering, would continue to race this generation of Cougar and Winston Cup through the 1980 season. Total production, 1974 91,670 1975, 62,987 1976, 83,765, fourth generation, in 1977, radical marketing changes came to Ford's intermediate lineup, although under the skin, mechanical changes were few. The Montego name was discontinued, and all the intermediate Mercury vehicles became Cougars. There were now Cougar sedans, complete with Opera windows, a lower line base coupe, and even a station wagon, which lasted only one year. 
the top-of-the-line XR7 continued as a separate model, with unusual simulated louvers applied in front of its Opera windows and a new rear style that was meant to evoke the larger Lincoln Mark Coupe. This year, the Elite name vanished from the Ford lineup and the Thunderbird was downsized onto its chassis to become the XR7's corporate twin. This association between the two cars would continue for two decades. In keeping with the general trend of the times, the old Torino chassis was discontinued after 1979 and all Ford and Mercury intermediates went over to the smaller, lighter Ford Fox platform for 1980. Customers to Lincoln Mercury showrooms were surprised by the all-new Cougar this year. New sharper and straighter styling that mimicked the Ford Thunderbird and Lincoln Continental Mark V replaced the fuselage look of earlier Cougars. The Cougar now shared its body with the Thunderbird, which was downsized to the intermediate body shell this year from that of the Continental Mark IV and shared the Cougar's 114-inch wheelbase, putting the T-Bird squarely in the intermediate personal luxury car market as opposed to its previous higher-priced segment of that market shared with the Buick Riviera and Oldsmobile Tornado. This move would join the Thunderbird and Cougar together and would last until their demise in 1997. The lineup was also expanded to include a sedan and station wagon. This was because the Mercury Montego had been discontinued and its models were absorbed into the Cougar lineup as a result while Ford Division renamed the Torino as LTD2. The base Cougar returned, as well, for all three models, but the XA7 came only as a coupe. The Cougar Brougham was available as a coupe or sedan, and the Cougar Villager was available as a station wagon only. The engine lineup changed for this year, as well. The base engine was the 134 HP 302 2 barrel V8 on all coupes and sedans. The station wagons had the 161 HP 351 2 barrel V8 standard. The 149 HP 351 2 barrel V8 and 173 HP 402 barrel V8 were optional on all models. For 1978, the base model two door and four door sedans stayed the same. The Brougham was discontinued as a separate model and became an option package on the base Cougar. The base model started at $5,009. XL7 sales continued to skyrocket. This package was only available in a two-door hardtop coupe. This model included power brakes and steering, 15-inch wheels, rear stabilizer bar, walnut wood tone instrument panel, XL7 trunk keyhole door, Cougar decklid script large hood ornament, and sport-styled rooflin with back half-vinyl and rear opera side windows and louvers. Some XR7s had the Rally Sport Tack and Gauge package. XR7 models started at $5,603. Two new decor packages became available, the XR7 decor option and the Midnight Chamois decor option. This latter package came with a half-vinyl roof, padded continental-type rear deck and midnight blue and chamois interior with Tiffany carpeting. This was Mercury's take on the special designer decor options used in the Lincoln Continental Mark VI. Engines continued unchanged, as well. The Cougar X-7 would set an all-time sales record this year. Few changes were made in 1979, as Mercury prepared to downsize the car. A new electronic voltage regulator and a plastic battery tray would be the biggest mechanical changes for the Cougar. The standard engine continued to be the 302 V8 with the 351 the only optional engine available, as the 400 was discontinued. A redesigned grille with body color inserts and a revised tail light assembly were the only exterior body changes. Total production 1977 194,823 1978, 213,270 1979, 172,152, fifth generation, for 1980, the Cougar was downsized to the 108-inch wheelbase Fox platform, shared with a Zephyr. The sedan and base coupe were dropped, leaving only the XL7. Opera windows became optional although the louvered style of the old opera windows was applied to the standard window coupés. Wipers were no longer hidden, and for the first time, the Cougar had sedan frames around its windows. Inside, there was a turn to flashy electronics, considered ultra-modern at the time, 
with digital instrumentation and trip computer functions available. A smaller 119 HP 255-inch 3V8 was the base engine, but this engine was considered weak and did not last long, and the 134 HP 302 V8 was optional, along with a newly introduced four-speed automatic overdrive transmission. Like the downsized Thunderbird, this generation was poorly received by the public. In 1981, the return of the base Cougar along with a sedan greeted Cougar buyers. The sedan replaced the Mercury Monarch. The engine lineup grew as a 94 HP 200 inch 3i6 became the standard engine in the XL7 and an 88 HP 140 inch 3i4 became the standard engine on the base Cougar, bringing with it a manual transmission. This marked the first time a four cylinder engine was available on the Cougar, as well as the first time the XL7 did not feature a standard V8. Appearance carried over, as well. But two new trim lines were added to the Cougasa Euro GS and LS. Both packages were similar in both models, but the base Cougar's LS package only came on the sedan. The GS package focused on appearance, while the LS package offered luxury touches such as power windows, keyless entry external number pad, and other luxury trim touches. The Cougar lineup continued to expand in 1982 as the station wagon returned for another single-year appearance in the Cougar lineup. It was available in GS or Villager trim lines. The Villager trim added faux rosewood body side applica copyright. Another engine was added, the all-new 112 HP 232-inch 3V6, but the XL7 line's 302 V8 was dropped. The GS and LS trim lines continued to be optional on both Cougar models. Total production, 1980-58,028-1981, 90,928-1982, 7,317-6th generation, an all-new Cougar greeted buyers in the fall of 1982. Gone were the sedan and station wagon models which were facelifted and moved under the marquee nameplate. The Cougar sported a completely new aerodynamic body, but retained the same chassis. This restyle was shared with its sister car, the Thunderbird, with the two becoming the first examples of the new aero look design, which would eventually spread throughout the Ford line and ultimately the entire industry. The major difference between the two was the side window treatments. The Cougar had a more formal notchback with a nearly vertical rear window and upswept quarter windows. This made the Cougar look more aerodynamic, as well as more exciting when compared to the previous generation of Cougars. The new look was such a hit, it outsold the Thunderbird for 1983. Because of the money spent in restyling both models, the interiors were left mostly unchanged from 1982. The GS and LS models carried over from the previous year. However, the XS7 did not, as there was not yet a performance version ready. The engine lineup changed as the only two engines offered were the 232-inch 3V6 and the 302-inch 3V8. The 390mm TRX wheels were an option. After its redesign for 1983, the Cougar remained mostly unchanged for 1984. The XL7 returned and for the first time, its standard engine was not a V8 or V6, but a turbocharged four-cylinder engine. Similar to the Thunderbird Turbo Coupe, the XS7 came only with the 145 HP 140-inch 3 turbocharged i4. The XS7 also featured blacked-out window trim, wide body side moldings and two-tone paint in silver with charcoal gray lower with tri-band striping to separate it from the base Cougars. A performance suspension was also standard. A 3-speed automatic or a 5-speed manual were offered on the XL7. Also for 1984, the 3.8 LV6 switched from a carburetor to throttle body fuel injection. Subtle exterior changes, such as a new Mercedes-Benz S grille and new tail lights were just a few of the many changes, as a whole new interior greeted buyers for 1985. This new interior featured an optional full digital instrument cluster which lent a futuristic touch to the Cougar, but it was only available on base and GS Cougars. The XA7 received a performance the analog gauge cluster, including a tachometer. 
The standard gauge panel in non exa 7s was an unusual mix of digital speedometer, analog gauges, and warning lights. The 1986 Cougar was a carryover year. It was supposed to be redesigned this year, but with sales continuing to be strong, Ford decided to push it ahead to 1987. The biggest changes were under the hood, as the 302 V8 received new sequential electronic fuel injection, which boosted power to 150 HP. A 20 HP improvement over the previous year. The Cougar X7 continued to offer only the turbocharged i4 but it got a power increase to 155 HP. Total production 1983, 75,743 1984, 131,190 1985, 117,274 1986, 135,904, 1987 a Euro 1988. The Cougar received a complete restyle for its 20th anniversary. Much smoother than the previous Cougar, it featured flush-mounted headlights and grille. The side-quarter glass retained its upswept design, but it was stretched more to the rear of the car. The interior remained mostly unchanged. The GS was dropped, leaving the LS and XR7 models. The XR7 changed by dropping the turbocharged i4, and the 302 V8 became the standard engine. The manual transmission was also dropped this year. The digital instrument cluster, previously optional on the GSLS models, became standard with exception to the limited edition XR7, which became analog only. The special lower tri stripes and blacked out window trim continued to set apart the XR7 from the LS. The Cougar's 20th anniversary was highlighted by a limited edition Cougar. Total production 1987 105,847 1988 113,801 20th anniversary Cougar to celebrate its 20th anniversary a limited edition Cougar was produced the car went on sale in February 1987 the Cougar LS was the starting point for this special model these special Cougars featured these standard items to set them apart from the regular production Cougars Cabinet red exterior with midnight smoke mouldings, all exterior badging was finished in 24 karat gold. C pillar emblems were finished in a gold cloisonne copyright. Non functional luggage rack, Mustang GT wheels painted gold with a Cougar center cap, special 20th anniversary edition dash emblem, light sand beige interior with unique part leather, part suede seats with eating and three user memory profile. The seats also featured a special cabinet red piping. Special embroidered 20th anniversary floor mats, traveler's convenience kit, a hardcover book Mercury Cougar 1967 a Euro 1987, which detailed the history of the Cougar, 150 HP SEFI 302 V8, sport handling suspension package, the only options were power moonroof, power antenna, illuminated entry, keyless entry automatic climate control, engine block heater, and a traction lock axle with a 3.08 gear ratio. Total production of 20th anniversary Cougar was 5,002, with at least 800 destined for Canada. With a new MN12 chassis and new body style coming in 1989, the 1988 Cougar changed little from the previous year. Outside, the biggest change was the XL7 now came in a new monochromatic color scheme. It was available in three colors with body colored or optional argent colored wheels. The base 232 inch 3V6 was revamped to include multi port fuel injection and an internal balance shaft that increased power to 140 HP. The 302 V8 received a dual exhaust option, which added 5 HP. The analog gauge cluster returned as standard on the XA7 but the digital cluster remained as an option on both the LS and XL7. Seventh generation, the Cougar entered its seventh generation with a completely new body and chassis. Nothing carried over from the previous Cougar except for badging and the engine. In fact, only six parts were carried over from 1988. The biggest change was the switch to the larger MN12 chassis, which was shared with the Ford Thunderbird. The chassis featured a fully independent rear suspension, a first for the Cougar. 
it was also 9 inches longer for better rear legroom. The flowing lines and extreme notch-back rooflin was still there, but this generation integrated the two much more successfully. To the surprise of fans, the car had no V8 engine available when introduced. Instead, the base LS had a naturally aspirated 140hp 3.8L V6, backed by a four-speed automatic transmission, which had a hard time moving the nearly 3,800lb Cougar. The XL7 had a 210hp supercharged version of the same engine. The car could be equipped with a five-speed manual transmission or a four-speed automatic with overdrive. Mercury spared no expense in equipping its XR7 performance model. Standard features included four-wheel anti-lock disc brakes, an electronically adjustable, sport-tuned suspension, monochromatic paint scheme in red, white, or black, and 16-inch alloy wheels. The base LS's more luxury-oriented features included a fully digital instrument cluster and exterior chrome trim. The Cougar saw a minor facelift for 1991 with a smaller grille and slight changes to the headlights, taillights, and side trim. Sales of the supercharged XL7 in 1989 and 1990 were slow, and as a result the 3.8 LSC engine was replaced by the 200 HP 5.0 LV8 in 1991 and became an option for the LS models. A special edition was built in 1992 to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the Cougar. In 1993, as part of a consolidation of the model lineup, the LS nameplate was dropped completely and the XA7, now badged XA7, became the only model available. It was equipped much like the LS except for the leather wrapped wheel shifter and full analog gauge cluster. As part of Ford's 1994 facelift for the MN12 platform, the 1994 Cougar received an all new interior, updated tail lights, grille and body side molding. Ford's new OHC 205 HP 4.6 LV8 replaced the pushrod 5.0 LV8, and all models came standard with the 4S70W 4-speed automatic transmission. For the 1996 model year, the exterior was given a significant facelift, similar to its MN12 cousin Ford Thunderbird. The front and rear bumper covers, headlights, grille, and molding were updated, giving the car a more modern look. The 4.6L engine received an updated composite intake manifold, giving the car 15 lbaft of additional torque over the 1995 model and the transmission was improved for increased reliability. The interior was given a minor update, which included a revised instrument cluster, much like that of the Ford Taurus Mercury Sable of the time and a center console with cup holders. The ashtray and cigarette lighter were relocated to the space previously occupied by the information center, now integrated in the instrument cluster. Another anniversary edition car was built to commemorate 30 years. Due to slowing sales and the imminent cancellation of the MN12 program, in 1997, Ford began cost-cutting measures and discontinued many convenience items, such as the elimination of the courtesy lamps, underhood light and glove box light. This was the last year for the MN12 Cougar, as Ford ultimately decided to discontinue its trio of personal luxury cars, the Mark 8, the Cougar, and the Thunderbird to concentrate on production of high-profit SUVs. The last Lorraine, Ohio-built Mercury Cougar rolled off the assembly line on September 4, 1997. Total production, 1989-97246-1990. 76,467 1991, 60,564 1992, 46,982 1993, 79,790 1994, 71,026 1995, 60,201 1996, 38,929 1997, 35,267. Eighth generation. In 1998, Ford began a redesign on the recently discontinued Probe, planning to add it back to the lineup in 1999. Due to marketing reasons, Ford decided to drop the Probe name and bring back the Cougar name for the redesigned car. Of the three names that had constituted Ford's personal luxury lineup, Mark, Thunderbird, 
and Cougar. The Cougar returned first and was based on the Ford Contour sedan. Launched in the UK at the British Grand Prix at the Silverstone Circuit in 1998, this Cougar became Mercury's first sport compact since the 1983 Mercury Lane 7. This generation of Cougar had a far more contemporary package, with modern DOHC 24-valve six-cylinder Duratec engines, a fully independent multilink suspension, and front-wheel drive. This was also the first hatchback Cougar, and the first to have its own body, unshared by any Ford. The body design used a philosophy Ford dubbed New Edge Design, a combination of organic upper body lines with sharp, concave creases in the lower areas. The Cougar's body, and the New Edge idea in general, was introduced as a concept called the Mercury MC2 in 1997, and was considered a bigger version of the European Ford Puma. The 1999 Euro 2002 Cougars were available with two engine options, the 2.0 Alzitk four-cylinder engine with 125 HP, and the 2.5 El Duratec V6 with 170 HP. Also, two transaxle options were available, the manual Ford MTX75 transmission or the automatic Ford CD4E transmission. Sport packaged models of the V6 featured four-wheel vented disc brakes, 16-inch alloy wheels, and the speed governor removed. With the electronic speed limiter removed, the top speed of the car was limited by drag and engine power in top gear at Reedline, around 135 mile per hour. While this was considered attainable given enough road, the automatic transmission version could not reach this speed without significant engine modification. However the manual transmission version of the car, when given enough road, was capable of reaching speeds of around 145. Without the sport package, the speed governor was set at 115 mph due to the H-rated tires with which the car was equipped. Ford also prepared two high-performance concept-only versions. One dubbed the Eliminator, which was a supercharged version built with aftermarket available parts, and the other the Cougar S which featured new bodywork, all-wheel drive and a 3.0 Al Duratec engine. Ford also sold this generation of Cougar in Europe and Australia as the Ford Cougar, and it was such a popular sales success. This new generation was aimed at younger buyers, but was sold alongside Sables and Grand Marquis, which were marketed toward middle-aged buyers. Also, Mercury salesmen did not know how to properly market the car, as they were used to interacting with older customers. A high-performance Cougar S was discussed in the press, which was essentially a Cougar with a Contour SVT engine. However, this version never made it into production. The Cougar S was so close to production, though, many of its parts are still available to order from the dealership and it is listed in many parts catalogs and insurance databases. It was also to be sold in Europe as the Ford Cougar ST200. To help create excitement for the Cougar, Mercury created several paint and trim packages, special edition available in zinc yellow, leather interior with yellow stitching on the seats, C2 available in either French blue, silver frost, or vibrant white, along with special blue interior accents, ZN available with special zinc yellow, special Vestian hood scoop and spoiler. X are available in either black or X are racing red, with special black and red seats and interior trim, also came with 17-inch silver wheels with black accents on the inner spokes, 35th anniversary versions were available in laser red, French, blue, satin silver, and black. Most came with leather interiors with silver center sections on the seats. They also came with 17-inch machined wheels, the same as the XRs without the black paint on the center spokes. Rouge edition available mostly in white and silver color choices. This car was built under the Rouge name with body work done to the front bumper, back, side skirts and more. It is considered the rarest of all Cougars, since only 112 were ever made during its two-year production. For the 2001 model year, the Cougar was updated as the Cougar 2 with new headlights, front and rear fascias, and updated interior trim. Ford announced a restructuring plan in 2002, and the Cougar was cancelled for good. The discontinuation of the Cougar left no four-cylinder vehicles in the Mercury lineup until the 2005 Mariner SUV arrived. 
the last one rolled off the assembly line on August 9, 2002. U.S. Production Numbers, Ford Cougar The Ford Cougar is a mid-sized Cooper copyright sold in the European market between 1999 and 2002. The car was named after the Mercury vehicle. It was originally intended to be the third-generation probe, but after a rationalization of the three Cooper copyright S available in the USA, the probe name was dropped in favor of the Cougar. It is identical to the US Mercury version, except for badging and right-hand drive in the UK and Australia only. Racing, in 1967, renowned NASCAR race car builder Bud Moore campaigned Mercury Cougars in the Transim series with Ford Motor Company factory support. The team featured superstar caliber drivers, such as Captain Dan Gurney, Parnelly Jones, Peter Revson, David Pearson, and Ed Leslie. Factory support dried up towards the end of the season and the Cougars began to show their wear. Ultimately, Mercury lost the championship to Ford by two points. In 1968, Bud Moore took his Cougars NASCAR racing in the newly formed Grand American Series. Star driver Tiny Lung dominated the series and took the championship. After the Cougar changed to the Thunderbird platform in 1974, the body style was raced in NASCAR. The Wood Brothers racing team with David Pearson and later Neil Bonnet was very successful with the car and scored a number of victories until the body style became ineligible following the 1980 season. The next year saw the previous Cougar teams switch to the Thunderbird when NASCAR mandated the smaller cars, though oddly the Thunderbirds had to have their wheelbases stretched 6 inches, as the production car's wheelbase was only 104 inches. From 1989 to 1990, Lincoln Mercury Motorsport fielded Cougars of the new body style in the GTO class of the IMSA GT Championship. The cars collected the championship both years, and continued the team's streak to seven manufacturers' championships. Film usage, A-Red 1969 Mercury Cougar X A7 convertible was used as the main car of Tracy D. Vicenzo in On Her Majesty's Secret Service. It was used as the getaway car to run from from Irma Bunt and her henchmen. It was later abandoned in a barn. The car looks to have a Cobra jet engine with ram air induction. References External links, Mercury Cougar at DMOZ, V6 Cougar, Ford Cougar site.